Hello there, it's Gabby here from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. This week's podcast is all about finding meaning and I'm particularly talking to people who have been through a cancer diagnosis. But as with so many of these things, it also applies to people who maybe have some sort of other crisis, whether it's a health crisis, a relationship crisis, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, it's a major life event sometimes can just stop us in our tracks and for so many people think, I thought I had a plan and I was on my way to achieving what I wanted to achieve. And actually, this event that I've just been through has absolutely thrown me off track. So I'm going to talk about finding meaning after a cancer diagnosis, what it meant to me and what it meant to some people that I've worked with as well. And I'm going to give you three tips really on how you can move forward. If you're finding that, you know, you, you've been through a major event, maybe a cancer diagnosis is diagnosis it may be something else but it's something where you think actually you know I'm, I'm not really sure who I am anymore and kind of gone out the window now and what can I do about that so I've got three areas that I can give you some guidance and and some share my experiences and some uh, experiences of people that I've worked with and see if they're helpful for you so the first one really is reflecting on your values, beliefs and priorities. And quite often we, we just get caught up in life, don't we? And sometimes it's to do with a job. You might put on the persona of the, the role that you've got. Sometimes it can be raising a family. And again, you put on the role of a, a mother or a father or whatever you play in that in that role. But quite often as we grow up and as we get older, we kind of lose ourselves a little bit. And so sometimes taking some time out for a cancer diagnosis, not that anybody wants to take time out, but if you've been forced to take time out for a cancer diagnosis, what it can you allow, what it can allow you to do is to spend some time reflecting on what is important to you. What are your values? What are your beliefs? And what are your priorities? And quite often, as I say, lots of us have busy, busy lives and we spend our time doing things that we think we have to do, things that maybe somebody else puts in our schedule. It might be a job, it might be family commitments, it might be other things. But quite often our life can be just taken up with things that actually don't fulfil us anymore, don't bring us joy, don't make us happy. So I would, again, I, I'm a big believer in a, a notebook or a journal to spend some time thinking about, well, actually, what are my values? What's important to me? And I've got a really good example of somebody that I heard that was trying to start a business. And she did this exercise of thinking, why did she want to start a business? And it was because she wanted freedom. She wanted time with her family um, and she wanted freedom. And she was making a range of skincare, I think it was all cosmetics, but something like that. And she was passionate about what she did. She absolutely loved it. And then she was approached by a big company, a big department store who said, oh, well, you know, we've got some great news for you. Um, we can give you a stand, you know, some an area in our store. But we really need you to be there all day on a Saturday and we need you to work certain hours and we want you to be there because you're the face of the business. And they set some quite stringent rules um, about how many days they work there. And she went away and thought about it and thought, well, actually, you know, I'm so ambitious for my company I can't believe you know I'm getting this recognition if I was in this big store I'm going to get a lot of new customers I'm going to make a lot of money and that'll be amazing it's going to help me move my business forward but when she went away and reflected on what her values were her values were freedom and time with her family and that kind of went away from what this company was offering her and so kind of with a heavy heart she rejected that offer because she knew it wasn't true to her values. Now, if her values had been just make as much money as I can in a short amount of time, perfect. That would have been a great offer for her. But sometimes, again, we we try, women particularly, try to please everybody and try and think, well, that's a good opportunity or, or that's a good thing for me to do. I, I can't say no. But we've always got choices. And it's quite a lot easier if you make those choices based on some real uh, focus that you've given to your values. What is important to you? Is it your family? Is it freedom? Now, I talk about freedom as if that's a good thing. For some th people, freedom is an amazing thing. That's what they want. That's what they want to achieve. Financial freedom, people talk about a lot. And, but for some people, that's really scary. That's not what they're about. For some people, they really like security. 
And so the, the idea of freedom and, and being an entrepreneur isn't just a nightmare to them. So it's a very personal thing for you to work through either on your, by yourself or with a coach. A coach can guide you to sort of elicit the values that you've got in your life. Think about the times when you were happiest. What, what was it about those times that were happiest? You know, and if you've got big ambitions, some people some people say, oh, I want to achieve this thing. It might be a money. Say you want a, people have got a money goal. It's not the money that they want. It's what they can do with that money. And again, what is it? Is it time with family? Is it time to travel? Is it time to indulge, you know, your own hobbies? What is it that you want that money for? It's not the pounds in the bank, is it? It's about the value that you attach to that. So reflecting on your values can really help you find meaning in your life because sometimes, as I say, we get swept along and people can go years sometimes without really thinking about what they want. And I heard a saying, somebody said, most people spend more time planning their summer holidays than they do their lives. So if you were to plan your life and you had everything in it that you wanted, what would it look like? Just leave you that question for now. The other thing is beliefs and priorities. So a similar vein, really, to values, but it's what's important for you. What do you believe? Do you believe we are here and your destiny is preordained? Or do you believe that you can change your destiny? Do you believe that you can grow, that you can learn, that you can learn new skills? How does that sit with you? And what are your priorities? Is your priority to make a lot of money? Is your priority to, to reach the top of your career? Is your priority to actually just chill out a bit and spend more time with your family or spend more time on a beach? Whatever it is, there's no right and wrong answer for these things. It is always what's important to you. So if you're really searching for meaning and you feel like you've lost your way, just reconnecting with, well, what are my values? What do I believe about life? What is true for me? What do I want to believe about life? And what are my priorities? And that's something as a coach, I, I, I spend a lot of time working with people about what they want and what they want their lives to be because we've all got choices. And sometimes, <laughs> you know, we, we live it. If you're lucky enough to live in the modern world, you know, we sometimes we've got too much choice. I remember, you know, not that long ago when we had three TV channels and now we've got, I don't know, hundreds of TV channels. And it can be a bit overwhelming sometimes to think, well, what do we want to watch? Yes, Friday night, we'll settle down with a bottle of wine and maybe some nice food and think about what we want to watch. And sometimes it's just so much choice. Uh, so if that's something I can help you with, let me know. OK, the second thing I would say about finding meaning that people um, really helps people when they are lost is helping other people. OK, and you might think, well, I've got a lot on my plate. I, I I don't know, I've got anything left to give it to other people. And that's fine for a short amount of time. If you are ill, I'm not saying to you, you know, if you're ill or you've got a real crisis that you should um, just jump up and start working for other people. But if you've got some time in your schedule, and again, it might be letting go of some um, commitments that you've got that are not floating your boat anymore, some commitments that you've got that are not helping you to create the life that you live could you be volunteering? Could you be advocating? Maybe some people after a cancer diagnosis spend a lot of time fundraising. And I've done that in the past as well. And it really helped me as well to focus about other people less fortunate than myself and, and a charity or a cause that I really believed in that could really use the money. And advocating for cancer awareness is something that people do as well, because we all sort of sail along until we get a diagnosis thinking cancer is something that happens to other people until it touches us. And so advocating or volunteering or supporting other people, that can really give your life meaning. And there's a lot of studies, I think, about happiness and about the happiest people are people who give to others. And, you know, if you think about it, it's quite altruistic. You're not doing it in a selfish way, but it's a byproduct of thinking about other people that are less fortunate than yourself that could use the benefit of your time of your experience, what have you learned about life that you can share with other people? What skills have you got that you could share with other people? You know, I've got a friend who does jewellery making classes with um, uh, a group of refugees, you know, and you can imagine they've come to this country and quite, you know, been through a very traumatic experience. And some very kind person has, has taken the time to find the resources and a, a location and a venue and to sit down with some people and do cookery classes or jewellery making classes or and it takes her an hour out of her week but she gets so much back from it she learns about other people other cultures and for those people as well 
it must be such a relief to find somebody who is not hostile to them, who's warm and who's welcoming. So what a lovely thing that is. And the third thing I'd say, if you're really struggling to find meaning in your life, is to think about reconnecting with passions or pursuits, hobbies, if you like, or just interests that you've got that bring you joy and fulfillment. Okay, and it can be whatever it again is, you know, could reel off a 100 things. It's what's important to you. And I, once I had an appointment with the doctor and she said to me, oh, what do you do in your life that brings you joy? And I said, well, well, I used to sing in a choir, but I don't do that anymore. I'm, I'm very busy. And she just looked at me and said, busy doing what? And that to me was such a profound question. Busy doing what? We're all busy. But busy doing what? Watching TV, going to work, you know, whatever it is, cleaning the house. You need to make some time, I think. It's my experience. You know, I'm never here to tell you what to do. My experience is if you want wellness in all areas of your life, how about thinking about reconnecting with your passions or your pursuits that bring you joy, that make you happy, that take you out of your head, out of your headspace sometimes if you've got thoughts that are going round and round that are not healthy, that are not supporting you. I spoke to a lady recently and she was telling me, oh, I love doing pin art. I never heard of this thing. It was just, you put pins in a, I'm not sure what the terminology is, but she makes pictures with pins, coloured pins, and she makes beautiful pictures. And it's not so much that she wants the picture, it's the fact that when she's doing this, she has to really concentrate and really focus. And she can't think about the quite disturbing thoughts that she had in her head because she's a cancer a patient that's going through a really tough time and she is worried about her survival rate she's worried about a lot of stuff she's got financial problems she's got also relationship problems you know all of us that have been through cancer can relate to that so many thoughts and problems swirling around in your head but sometimes just focusing on pin arts or whatever it is that you can focus on takes you away from those crazy thoughts that are going round and round in your head that are not serving you they're not getting you closer to a solution they're just distracting you from the, the very important job you've got of recovery. And recovery, you know, it's we're not just physical bodies. You know, the doctors in the UK are great uh, if you've got a cancer, removing the tumour. But I believe it's more than that for full recovery. It is mind, body and spirit all need to be nurtured, all need to be cared for, all need to be help, helped to get back into full health. And you can take major steps in doing that yourself by following these three steps so i'm not saying that i'm um, oops somebody outside i'm feeling a horn somebody quiet <laughs> uh, impatient outside my house um i'm not saying that we can take away pain and suffering okay but if we integrate what we've learned into a, na a larger narrative of growth resilience and hope because it's all about for me my recovery has all been about improving my resilience life is not always easy things happen you know I've seen so many awful things happen to really nice people it's all part of life we all have our ups and downs but to cope with that there's a lot you can do yourself to develop your resilience and I'm not saying well what a great thing it is to have a cancer diagnosis because it's clearly not but what it can give you if you grasp this as a learning opportunity is it can to develop skills of developing your own resilience so that when you get when those awful things that happen to us all come along in life whether it's you know bereavement or the death of a loved one or it's a financial problem or the loss of a job or um, the breakdown of a relationship whatever it is if you can build up your inner resilience your inner strength you have then got the skills and the coping strategies to sort of ride the storm i'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's all about, it's not the event, it's how you react to it and what you can learn from it and what how you can grow. And I have tried very hard and I'm still working through it. I'm not saying I'm the finished article. You know, I work with a coach. I'm still developing. I'm still learning. But I can see I've made so much progress by being open-minded to growth. I want to personally grow. I want to get better at things. I want to develop skills that I've got and I want to learn from the mistakes that I've made in the past and not make those mistakes again and so I'm learning I'm working with a coach I'm also coaching other people Joan I've learned although coaching is not about telling people what to do it's holding their hand while they develop their own path and I love to do that and for me 
that is what gives my life meaning is when somebody tells me how much I've helped them. If I can see, you know, the changes they've made in their life. I've not done that for them. They've done it themselves. But I've shared my experience and I've helped them. And that gives me a warm glow inside. It really does. It gives my life meaning. So if you're struggling with finding meaning or you're struggling with anything to do with a cancer diagnosis or life after treatment finishes, which for me was my darkest hour, get in touch with me. If I don't know the answer to your problem, I bet I know somebody who can help you. But I'm always here for you. And as always, thank you so much for listening. It really means a lot to me. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe and stay sane. And we'll speak soon, my darling. Bye bye.